can't really say. How I could completely change a person's life, completely, even without the association of the voice. Of course, from there, they'll look up for the association of the voice. I mean, there's so many stories. How people have just, this, I was just with Naranjan Swami last week, and we were, it was last Sunday also. We were speaking, and he was reading this whole list of these letters from these children that were they, were, they sent it to the BBT in Russia. They had all these kids from Russia, not eight years old, nine years old. They got a book. They said, oh, these books are so nice. I really like that girl. She's so nice. That girl, Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> He's very cute. She's very cute. Can you send us some more of that really nice mm, stories about Krishna? We really like these stories. I think these stories are the best stories I've ever heard. You know? Very simple, humble, unpretentious appreciation for Krishna consciousness. So everyone, even kids who are, let you know, me say, not even reached their teenage years, they read the books. And, oh, this is so nice. So, and people ask, you know, just like one person asked, you know, how can you... You know, we're supposed to have compassion for these people that were out there trying to, to, to change their lives. How do you have compassion? How can you be compassionate to people? You know, I just don't feel the compassion. I said, don't worry. Just to the pure devotees, they have compassion. The Lord, He has complete compassion. Just serve them by, by distribu trying to please them by distributing these books. And then you can also experience them with that mercy in the same way. Even if you don't have compassion, still do it as a service. Do it to please the Lord. And that way we can, we can if we please the Lord, then that is the perfection. And Prabhupada says, you know, preaching really means book distribution. You know, sometimes we People don't like that statement. <laughs> and some people don't. They think, well, and others they think preaching is the book distribution is the only form of preaching. I mean, we have two sides, you know. You know this, every movement has their liberals and has their conservatives, and then they have the people in between. <laughs> but pre you know, preaching is book distribution is the foundation for all other forms of preaching. Whatever else we do. There should be Prabhupada's books there to, when we say, bring people to the point of understanding that this, this science of bhakti is a very deep, philosophical, time-tested, organized expression of transcendental knowledge that is not coming from any person in this material world. It's coming down from the spiritual world into the hearts of the pure devotees who's realized this knowledge by practice, and then they're writing this knowledge down in the form of this, these books. So when you're actually holding these books, you're holding, and Prabhupada said, time bombs. <laughs> <laughs> or torpedoes, he's also used that word. <laughs> Just torpedo a person's life. <laughs> Change it around. Time bombs. Time bombs means that somehow or other it has an effect, maybe not immediately, but in the due course of time, it will, have, it will have its effect. So Prabhupada understood that, you know, if we could just saturate the world with this literature, then but wherever people go, they'll get a book. And we have one very, very, very intelligent, determined, amazing book distributor in America. I think he's the best, I mean, not to be but prejudiced, I think he's one of the best book distributors ever. And he's a robot disciple. He's been around for almost 40 years. His name is by Shishika. You've probably heard of him. And he's always thinking how to distribute books. And wherever he goes, he gives seminars on book distributions. And the whole temple becomes enlivened by his seminars. And he, then people go out and distribute books. 
But he's come up with so many ideas on how to distribute books. Now we got what is called smart boxes. You have them here too. The smart boxes. You just put a box with you know a little donation box. You put some books there. People take a book with a donation in the box. And somebody manages the boxes, keeps the books supplied, and collects the donations. But we also have what they call in the motels now. You're doing that here too. In motels. Started in motels. And one man, one Indian man in America, he thought, well, it's a Bible. It's, why not put Bhagavad Gita in the motels too? So he started putting it in his motel. And some people were going, looking, oh, this is a nice book. And I remember when I used to travel, we would stop at hotels, and every hotel had a Gideon's Bible. Same Bible. <coughs> Same edition, every hotel all over America. Now there's Bhagavad Gita, they're doing the, this Bhagavad Gita motel distribution. Of hotels, motels. And also now they have what they call vending machines now with the books in it. You can put your little money in it, pull a lever, and here comes that science of self realization and coming back and something like that. Putting them at uh, rest stops. At, uh, travel places, or just people who have stores, just put books up in a little book display at somebody's store, so people can get books. There are so many ways to distribute books. Of course, one-to-one -one is one of the most effective ways, because the personal touch adds a certain element of attraction to the, to the purchaser. They meet the devotee. And they become inspired by the person, and then they buy the book also. So, uh, I think the success of our movement has been due to book distribution. I know many of the temples that are in America now, and huge temples, we have a lot of huge temples, many of them were bought simply by the money that was collected by way of book distribution. Simply, only book distribution, because when Prabhupada was here, we didn't have a congregation. It was in every, every devotee that was practicing Krishna consciousness was a temple devotee. There might have been a few well-wishers and friends outside, but there was no congregation. Congregation started to happen in the late 70s and 80s. That's when it, in the 80s it started to take. It was, everyone was a temple-based devotee. Everyone lived in the temple. So, 1973, 74, 75, and 76, those four years, book distribution was just, just, I mean, people were distributing so many books. Rabbi was so happy. And every day they would say, they would say every year double it. And so, in 74, they doubled it in 75, and 75, they doubled it in 76. It was a frenzy to distribute Prabhupada's books. I mean, sometimes it went a little bit too far how we distributed books. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our tactics got a little bit outside of the, you know, we say, the uh, way that people would easily understand. Mm -hmm. But somehow or other, um, these books have changed people's lives uh, tremendously. There's one story, I'm sure you've probably heard this story. There was one man, he was just sitting in a, his <coughs> van, sitting in a van. He was in one parking lot, I think it was a, I'm not sure, a supermarket parking lot or some parking lot. And he was committing suicide. He was running the, the exhaust pipe back into the cab and running the engine. So a devotee was distributing books in that same place and he knocks on the man's window and the man waves him away. So the devotee was really quite intelligent so he took a book and he put it on the man's windshield and left. Small book. So after he left, the man and I started to think, oh, what is this? So he rolled down the window, put, grabbed the book and he started to look at it and it said, explains, you know, how to become happy. So if you're committing suicide, you're not really so happy, you know, obviously. 
So it kind of really sparked his interest, and we just read, and then in the back there was uh, a list of temples, and so he decided to terminate his process of termination. <laughs> and he just, he uh, read the, the listing, and he came to the temple and told his whole story. <laughs> And he was interested in becoming a devotee. So these these are uh, how powerful these books are. They actually do save lives, not only spiritually, but also physically too.